Citaries solve a ton of important problems for construction contractors. You can use them to track your budget, your schedule, you can use them to manage your employee timesheets, and you can capture important records that help with contractual claims. Most people either try to do them in hand or messy Excel spreadsheets and lose track of all the data, or they pay for incredibly expensive construction management software that just does the basics. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can build your own construction site diary for free that does exactly what you want it to do. Okay, here's what we're building. We're building a simple site diary that tracks our employee hours against the budget, and the quantity of work completed against three main cost codes, site excavation, reinforcement installation, and concrete placement. It's got an incredibly simple user interface that we can customize or change as we want, where we capture key project information, such as the weather, notes, any safety issues, and can upload photos. Then for each of the workers in our crews, we can capture the hours they've worked and the cost code that they've worked under, and the quantity of work completed against each of our cost codes. This data then gets stored in a series of tables where we've got all of our site diary entries and the quantity of work completed against each of our cost codes. So against each of our cost codes, and again, we can change these as we want and adjust them for our project. We've got the description of the cost code, the unit of measure, the budget hours, the budget quantity of work, and then all the timesheets we fill out, all the site diary entries we fill out, automatically track the hours against it, and then we can calculate some metrics like CPI or percentage quantity complete against each task. Again, we can adjust this to suit whatever project we wanna work on. This is just an incredibly simple template I whipped up in about 30 minutes to prove the concept. Okay, so this has been built in Airtable. If you're not familiar with what Airtable is, it's basically a much easier to use version of Excel where instead of having everything living in separate sheets, we can combine databases together, develop simple automations to process the data. We can also build interfaces where we display the data in charts. So here I've got three interfaces for the site diary, a performance dashboard, a cost code, a cost code tracker, and then a calendar, which shows all of our site and diaries. Sorry, my internet's a bit bad, it's taking a while to load. And then we can also generate forms to collect data. So Airtable, Excel would be quite manual and time consuming to set all this up. Airtable, it's incredibly simple to build different databases, to link the databases together or to relate them without complicated VLOOKUPs. And you can also develop interfaces and forms that you can share with people with simple URL links that, and they don't necessarily need Airtable to do it. So now I wanna give you a quick overview of some core concepts to help you understand Airtable. First thing you need to understand, which is on the data tab, are tables. So tables are basically different containers for data. They look very similar to Excel spreadsheets and they operate almost exactly the same way. You can have a variable number of tables. So for example, for this site diary, we've got a site diary table where the original site diary entries when the form gets filled out, gets stored. We've got labor entries, which track all the individual labor entries that go into the site diary. Quantity entries that do the same thing. Cost codes, which is then the summary table where all the hours and, and work completed are tracked against the different cost codes. So these are all different places we can enter and store data, and we can have variable types of data depending on the type of data we wanna record. So if you add a new table, you can see you could have single text, long text, attachments, checkboxes, dates, phone numbers, emails, URLs, blah, blah, blah. So it lets you store different types of data. Each row in our column in Airtable is referred to as a record. So this is where a set of data is stored. Now. Each table in Airtable is independent, but they can be linked very easily to other tables. So for example, here you can see the labor entry tables that is linked to the site diary entry. So it's linked to the records in the labor entries 24, 25, 26. So if we look at labor entries, we look at 24, 25, and 26 we can see the records associated with that site diary entry. What makes Airtable so powerful is that you can link the different tables. In Excel, you need to do this with complex index matching or VLOOKUP formulas. 
To do this in Airtable, all we have to do is add a new field and link to another record and we can relate our tables together. The next concept you need to understand in Airtable, a record. So you can think of a record as an item. In our site diary table, each record is a new entry for our site diary. In our labor entries, each record in our labor entry table is a worker's hours on a specific day against the cost code. Same with the quantities, each record in our quantity table is the quantity of work completed against the cost code in a specific day. So for example, if we look at the record details on the site diary table, you'll notice that the fields across the top of the table correspond with the entry in the form. So whenever somebody fills out one of these forms, the data from that automatically gets stored as a new record in our site diary data. Importantly, every record in Airtable has a unique ID that Airtable uses to identify it. So you can begin to see that the way Airtable stores and categorizes data makes it very easy to link and relate things. The next concept in Airtable is a field. So a field are the columns of our tables. Each field has a specific data type that you can select. So if I add a new field, you can see all the different types of data we can collect. We can link to another record, so that's where you can relate these different tables. You can do single text, long text, attachment, checkbox, multi-select, single select. You can have users, date, phone numbers, basically anything you can think of, even formulas if you want to do basic calculations, you can store as a specific type of field. Linking records is what makes Airtable very powerful. Basically what linking records does is it allows you to create relationships between the different tables in Airtable. Now, in Excel, again, this would have to be done with complex index matching or VLOOKING formups, VLOOKUP formups, but here you can do it very simply. In addition to simply just linking records, you can also use the roll-up field, which is very powerful for summing data across tables. For example, in the cost code table, we're using a roll-up field to sum all the hours worked against a specific cost code. So those are the four fundamental concepts of Airtable. Again, when you start to play around with it, it'll make much more sense, but it's basically Excel on steroids that allows you to relate data more effectively and also allows you to build some simple automations, interfaces and forms. How does our site diary work? Well, we have four key tables. We have the site diary where all the diary entries are logged. This is the data source that is linked to the form that gets filled out. Each bit of information we want to capture has to be a specific field in our site diary entry. In our specific daily report, what we're capturing is general project information, and then we're tracking the hours of everyone working on the project against a specific cost code, and then we're tracking the quantity of work completed. So if we go back to our site diary table, we can see there is a field that matches each of these entries in the table. Now, an important concept with Airtable is that one form relates to one table and each form you fill out will create a new record in a table. That's why we also have to have these labor entry and quantity entry tables so we can sum the total amount of work done against a specific cost code. The reason we do that is because on our site diary entry, we could have multiple workers working against the same cost code on the same day. We need to then break these out into the individual labor and plan entries so we can roll them up on the cost codes tab against the specific cost code. So we can know the total quantity of work completed and total hours per task. To do that in Airtable, we use a tool called automations. So, an automation is simply when a specific action happens. So when a form is submitted, there's then a process where through an automation, we take the hours that Mike worked, for example, and we create a new record based on this. So we've got a clean entry of all the different labor records. We can do this for the quantities as well. Every time a new form is created, and the excavation quantity in that form is greater than zero, we create a new quantity record in the quantities table. This then gives us a clean set of records of all the individual labor entries that were made and all the different quantity entries that were made. So we can see the entry ID, the linked diary, the date it was completed on, 
the cost code the work was completed on and under and the quantity completed, which then on our cost codes tab, so we've got three cost codes on this project, site excavation, reinforcement installation, and concrete placement. We can then use a roll up field to sum the total hours worked and the total quantity logged. So for example, based on the diary entries we've got, for site excavation, we had a budgeted quantity of 500 meters cubed. We had a budget of 200 hours. We've logged 37 hours. So this is a roll up field looking at all our individual labor entries and we've logged 232 meters cubed. We can then calculate a percentage complete of our quantity, a percentage complete of our hours, and then a cost performance index. Based on that, you could calculate any metrics you want. I'll just put that there as an example. So the CPI is just using a simple formula. Once we've got this clean cost code summary, what do we want to do with it? Well, we want to create an interface where we can share it with people and generate a simple report that we can send to management. We do this with an interface. So this interface I've built, again, I've literally built this in 20 or 30 minutes to prove the concept, but you can chop it and change it however you want to capture the exact data and present it in the exact way you want to. It has an entry called site diaries where we can see diaries created on each day. It shows our cost code table, and then it shows a very simple dashboard with some key metrics. So for example, as our cost codes, all we're showing is a table which shows the exact information in our record, which shows the three cost codes, the budgets, the quantity completed, the budget hours, the budget hours completed and calculates some key metrics. And then we've got a very simple dashboard that just shows the percentage completion by hours, the budget versus actual, the cost code completion, and then the CPI of each of the cost codes. Again, this I built in literally five minutes. So it doesn't look that good. You can chop it and change it to show any sort of data you want in a much better way than this. So I hope that helps. Again, super simple. I built it very fast, but you can see the power of learning how to use tools like Airtable to build simple relational databases, automations and interfaces it works as well as any construction management software I've seen out there. And this was done also using the free plan on Airtable. So again, completely free. You can then share it with people who don't have Airtable through URL links.